uh, as we deal with in extensive reading uh, we are supposed to confront series of texts literary texts in order to read them and try to offer different readings our analysis our insights and the stories that I have chosen here a pair of genes bucket and rope the demon rubber and the destructors four types of stories and the choice was meant to expose to you a variety of writings ranging from the cultural as in a pair of genes the moral as in bucket and rope the psychological as in the demon lover and the political historical social as in graham green's the destructions and this variety of text is meant to expose you to enrich your readings and your analysis and as uh, a first story a pair of genes by Ezra Shahraz uh, I introduce you this uh, type of writing which raises the point of which is cultural the writer herself Ezra Shahraz who was of Pakistani origin but educated in Great Britain uh, reflects some of the issues probably she lived in and uh, they are transmitted in her story of pair of genes she was born in pakistan and she was novelist and scriptwriter and lived in manchester since she was nine and as a school teacher lecturer in development officer and quality improvement manager and now she is currently a, a college inspector and education consultant and i have the chance and the privilege to invite her to our university and she met our students sometimes and we discussed some of the issues that she raises in her writing as for her writings she produced two novels uh, the holy woman and typhoon and in these novels she raises the same concerns conventions religion patriarchy women predicaments and so on so she is not far from the area that we have read in a pair of genes short stories elopement the discovery a pair of genes and she focuses on issues facing young pakistani muslim women as they work and how to live in a world where traditional and western values clash so from this brief induction you can guess what i am in i am in at when i am analyzing a pair of genes woman and clash of cultures and the meeting point the meeting zone between traditions between values and between norms <coughs> and in a pair of genes as you have read it marion discovers the major character that a semen an uncoarse item of clothing can cause disorder disaster and genes it is a metaphor of western attire on a pakistani muslim girl and from the title uh, we have an eastern subject maryam and wearing western objects and the encounter triggers a dilemma and conflict uh, we have a new identities in the making and identity the issue of identity is a very problematic as identity is never fixed and it is complex and multiple and and i can refer you to amin maalouf's book in the name of identity where he explains as an example where the complexity of identity which is an amalgam of sources linguistic social moral intellectual historical so it is very very fluid it's never fixed and the title shows this duality and doubleness genes it is modernity it is fashion it is westernization 
and the character it is the product of local Pakistani culture and the British foreign educational system so between, we have a pair so she's between between two localities geographies cultures generations beliefs norms identities and this is what the writer tries to raise is that this conflict and this doubleness and the intercultural is predominant and the culture of cultures modernity one of the themes that we find from beginning modernity versus traditions genes versus shalwar minds versus body free university student versus dependent girl so we have a set of conflicts in the word pair genes object Maryam being she versus they living here versus there living studying and behaving in the west versus sticking to convention to conventions and as a piece of summary of the story as you read it uh, Maryam would be here in laws came to discuss uh, the wedding arrangement and coming uh, from a day out with her university classmates in jeans and the short west Maryam was shocked at the arrival of uh, her in-laws, their gaze tormented her, and angry and prejudiced, they left and phoned her mother to announce breaking their son's engagement with Maryam. Unaware, Farouk, the would-be uh, husband, future uh, fiancé, let his parents decide for his future, but Maryam rebels and calls him for a meeting to discuss and decide about their fate. And you can see Maryam as a newly young educated girl, a girl is in a face in fa facing the parents, the in-laws, a whole institution standing for authority, conventions, Pakistan, religion, norms, while she is alone confronting the storm. Uh, if you when you read the story, we, we met at the end two possible endings. The first one, if Maryam is furious and retires to her room. And let me say that it is very strange to find in a story two endings. We ask question why. Why does the writer write the first and then the second? In the second, she pulls jeans from her wardrobe and kicks them as if they were to blame for her desperate situation. And the implication of science and ending, as I understand, is that in the first ending, we find Maryam as the subversive, the uh, obedient, while in the second, she is another figure who is rebellious. She dresses in the same clothes that standardize her future in-laws and defiantly sets out to inform her fiancé about his parents' decision. So she, at the end, the second ending, she tries to put her in distance between her hands and move to react. The structure of the story, we have short introduction of the protagonist and the impact of clothing. And narrative moves straight forward for climax right after the unexpected encounter at the gate, Miriam in laws. Uh, and by the way, there is a moment of the story, we are focusing on a pair of genes. And ironically, the in laws met before Miriam in a meeting place with the Shalwar. And that's the image that you have uh, of Miriam is that the woman who abides by the uh, Pakistani attire. They don't consider the human being and the values that this human being, but rather the uh, external attire that's stereotyping Miriam as a girl who is obedient and good. But to wear a pair of jeans, that's different. It is going beyond and far from the norms. And narrative moves straight for climax right after the unexpected account at the gate with Maryam and Laws. Confusion and anxiety among all the cutters, and they have tension. And narrative focuses on two different aspects, Maryam and the in-laws, that is a Yuv and Began. And another climax began when uh, Began breaks the news of the broken engagement to Fatima, her mother. So the fatal news may causes Maryam's and Fatima's emotional collapse and leads to two endings. So we have two versions and difficulty to make a decision and there's a shock. So, and at the end, the reader is invited to contribute. And uh, of course, the majority are with the second. That is to say, uh, uh, the story is open-ended 
and other options are possible and the reader may come up with different possibilities. So you can see that the ending, though we've met at the end that Miriam is going to put genes and react to in laws, we don't know what the consequences are, seeing that the dominant structure is that of the in-laws and it is an open-ended uh, story. Omniscient, for the narrative technique, we have the third person, the chronological linear progression, traditional movement of the story, visit of in-laws, leaving, discussion, end and reaction, a brief return to the past, first meeting with production in a traditional attire, that was say shalwar. So Marian for them is the, the girl who used to wear that shalwar at that meeting point, very traditional. Dialogue is absent and that's one important factor of the story. Dialogue is absent and that's what is needed in the story in fact between the characters concerned, especially Mariam and, and Farouk. And that's what we have in the end of the story when Mariam is inviting Farouk to discuss. The discussion is needed. And the in-laws discussion is dominant. Attitude, their position, decision makers, uh, showing their authoritative, conservative attitude that they are the lawmakers, while the new generation does not have a voice of their own. Uh, monologue also is there because Maryam uh, uh, is when they saw the, the attire when she went up to her room she discussed with herself truths these are questioning the issue of the genes and this monologue shows that there is absence of dialogue and understanding and it raises it shows also this monologue that uh, occurred in the story is that the dilemma and anxiety of the protagonist trying to find out a solution to the crisis Setting, first, it is a macro setting, Britain, modern time, university. On the other hand, we have Pakistan, Urdu, convention. It is a macro setting, the West versus the East. But also, we have a micro setting that is that of the Maryam and the family. They are set apart. The genes also, it is modern f with free association, while shalwar associated with traditional and it is culturally bound. So we have two words, two times, two cultures, and uh, physical location and cultural encounters. And you can see that the story is set in modern Britain while the characters are holding with them the Pakistani Urdu convention with them in such a situation. And here it raises the problem of the uh, Muslim Pakistani diaspora in a Western context. When we deal with characterization, main character Maryam and his mother Fatima, the in-laws Ayyub and Vegan, and Farouk, these are the main characters that appear. And characters are delineated according to their relations, views, and attitudes apart from the genes. We don't have a lot of description, but rather we are inside their minds, their feelings, and thoughts and ideas and feelings reflect the tension between characters. And characters are a reflection of the cultural, moral, and generation conflict. Miriam, as a major character, she is the protagonist, defined first relation to her gender, age, education, and culture. And we can guess the importance of a woman, feminine writer, giving value to a girl. Uh, so probably we, there is a possibility of dealing, confronting the story from a feminist point of view, giving voice to women. Uh, also, we have Maryam as a name, has religious connotation. And we know Maryam in the Quran, an epitome of chastity and innocence in conflict and dilemma with the other's gaze. Very important, the name, the choice of the name is, say, is to focus on this purity and chastity of the character in the face of the storm of the other's gaze, because the in-laws, when they saw, they stand for the norms and look at a girl with a pair of jeans, so she's out of the norm, she must be punished, we have to break this. And chastity, here we have similarity between laws and other's gaze. The gaze is critical, the gaze is uh, uh, negatively presenting the story. So, so they are blind as to the internal beauty of, of Maria. 
and now she has she's wearing jeans now tomorrow she is going to have a, uh, a boyfriend and so on and so on so their mind goes far into other areas so another thing is that Maryam is fatherless very important important here and never father never shows up we ask question why and uh, the absence of the father uh, can uh, be explained first of all here in the story as a need for protection while Maryam at the end is powerful. Ayub's, uh, Farouk's father is authoritative. He doesn't have a voice, the authority of the father. Maryam does not, his father doesn't appear, but she has a voice at the end. Does the writer want to say that authority should be avoided? Does she ask the uh, authority of the father to be reduced? That's your point here. And that's what we have at the end. This is the logic of the story because alone she is going to face the storm of the in-laws. And Fatima, mother, she has she is a protective figure and sympathetic figure. So if you have characters, female characters, her mother, and also even the mother-in-law is sympathizing with Maryam, but the authority of the father is that, is the figure of the father. So we have Maryam, we have two sides according to the Indians. So she's flat, static, as to her acceptance and subservience and submissiveness to the dictation of the in-laws, but she is round character and dynamic as to her rebellious attitude at the end, gaining self-confidence and deciding to decide for uh, her future. She called Farouk the birth, and the call is the birth of the new educated woman that challenges conventions. And the writer's point of view at the end, is it a feminist? Yes, it's a feminist somehow, because the girl is taking her destiny in her hand, and she's going to decide about the fish. That's the positive, optimistic note that we have about the story. The in-laws, Ayub and Faro and uh, uh, Megan, they are flat, static, because from beginning until the end, stand for authority, conventions, and fixed gaze of the others. So they are prototype of traditional family, society that breaks development and change. Ayub, patriarchal, masculine, he has the last words, and that's where the writer introduced his criticism to the convention established in the uh, such a society. Uh, it's uh, the same thing when we read Kezara Shahra's novel, The Holy Woman, we'll find the, the importance of masculinity and how the father, in the absence of a brother, of, of a, a son who is going to inherit, because in the novel, in The Holy Woman, the son who is supposed to inherit dies, and he, the daughter who remained is that the father is uh, afraid that the heredity, the heredity, the legacy is going to be to, tr to be transmitted to a man who is going to marry his daughter. So he decided to marry her to to make her wear the uh, the costume the of the holy woman, and he say, "I marry you to the Quran, which doesn't exist something in the Muslim religion." So and she decide he decide to put clothes and. Uh, oblige her not to marry a man so as not to so to the the legacy and the heritage remains within the family which is a uh, false reading a first use of the religion here ayub as i said here began is silent and submissive as i said because the father has and the husband has the last words they have the power to choose and to break relation what is uh, missing in these is Farouk, the son. He is flat, static, silent, and never seen or heard. It is the father and the mother who speak on his behalf. He is the prototype of an absent male due to family conventional attitudes, unable to choose, to speak, or decide. And this is, as according to the text, it is an implicit criticism to the weight of tradition and patriarchy. When we uh, deal with the themes of the story, clash of cultures, identity, and call for change. As we are discussing here, uh, clash of culture, it is one of the central themes, which probably the writer faced herself as a Pakistani uh, uh, writer 
of Pakistani origin and the central forces of modernity versus forces of convention. Someone coming from a traditional Eastern context is going to live in a modern Western one. And the outcome of cultural encounters is this clash of culture if there is no uh, uh, tolerance, the way of trying to marry or to blend the two. Uh, instead of being a rich blending, it becomes an obstacle as we have it in the story here. Uh, it is the impact of migration and the text here shows us that one of the uh, impact of migration is this clash between old values and modern ones uh, and movement from east <coughs> with its representation into the west and the cost, the cost of such a movement. So encounters, forces of change, and you have a dilemma. That's what is reflected in the text. Uh, the intercultural choice here in the hand of the new generation, as we find it at the end of the story, it reflects the young daughter and girl is going to think of change. So as I said, she takes her destiny in her hands. Another uh, uh, problem raised in the story is that of identity. And I refer you again, uh, you have a chance to read, for example, as an example, Amin Malouf's In the Name of Identity, where he reflects on the complexity of this term, this concept here, and he questions this problem, is never fixed, but it is fluid through time and space, and as long as a human being is meeting others, is reading and, and living with others, is acquiring new identities. So he's for the complexity, the fluidity of identity uh, in, in life. Uh, and as a concept, it is subtle and difficult to fix. Identities are not fixed, and they are informed by many sources. And as we'll see here, uh, it, it, molded in, it is molded in different ways, and many factors shape Maryam's identity, family, culture, gender, age, education, language, East, West, these are all uh, factors or components which make of Maryam the character we read. Is that we cannot say that this is this, this, this. So it depends on which factors we are focusing on. And Maryam is in the process of acquiring a new identity as a meeting point between what she brought from her local culture and what she acquires from the next one. And she is going to bring something new. It is never fixed and it is ever changing. Another important theme of the story it is a call for change. A story is an, out an outcry for change on all levels. Cultural relativism. So we should not stick blindly to our cultures. And uh, the importance is the marriage between culture in order to bring new. Cultures have been traversing worlds, times, spaces, histories, and we are the outcome of a mixture, of an amalgam of different cultures. Uh, intercultural negotiation as well, a gradual integration of the new generation, a patriarchal authority, the feminine voice and present. So you can see that this story calls for change for, on the level, on the cultural, on the patriarchal, on the feminine, on the individual character. Some of the general comments that we can produce, how a person's dressing, clothing can change people's perceptions of the tea of them and cause major impact. As we'll see here that appearance also is questioned uh, and the discrepancy between appearance and the internal self is questioned here. Uh, a pair of genes, uh, the symbol of westernization and the western world is seen as unscrupulous with lower moral code with the decent lifestyle totally opposite to that of the traditional rich culture of their for fathers. So the pair of genes raises this problem of the uh, attire and how it had an impact on people's perceptions. Uh, also, the dilemma of the Eastern females living abroad who are born there and in order to amalgamate in that country, adopt their clothing styles, cause it to be more practical for every day. So very important that people acquiring, as I said, new identities as long as they are living, and it is the new generation 
and the, the text calls for change. The females are in their social gatherings, for instance, holidays, weddings, funerals, and other events they wear the traditional clothing of Pakistani females, such as shalwar and kamis, as we have it in the story, when the in-laws saw Marima, they saw in the traditional clothes, and it is part of the festivity. And this is due to the insistence of the old generation of parents who originally migrate, uh, migrate from their home country to the Western countries uh, to uh, expect their female family members of having the traditional views of their origin homeland despite the fact that the female has been born and raised abroad and may never even have visited parent country. So they ask them to uh, cope with tradition though they were not born there. Uh, the dilemma of Pakistani females, as I say, especially those living abroad as their family in-laws and the Pakistan society want them to be what they deem uh, as traditional Pakistani females, as I said before. Uh, a pair of genes is the symbol of Islamization and is held responsible for the whole situation, which is ironical. The taboo, the known convention, which is raised in the story, uh, showing part of body is considered to be highly offensive and intolerable in Eastern countries, both Islamic and even some of non-Islamic states. And Maryam herself was highly aware of it and uncomfortable wearing it. Uh, and she was conscious of that and uh, conscious of breaking the norms according to her in-laws. So dress and clothing is uh, emphasized in the story as the source of trouble. And people and society are fixated on a person's clothing to perceive that individual's personality. Uh, people, also the text uh, raises the problem of people's perceptions of that individual and how such a person make it different uh, according to the people. So if you like here, reading uh, a pair of genes, we encounter the voice of a female writer, a writer who carries in herself this legacy of the doubleness, that is to say, being born in Pakistan, being educated in Britain, and uh, experiencing such a dilemma of carrying both sources, both traditions, both values, and the, the question is how to cope with these issues. And the story, a pair of genes reflect. A pair of genes reflect this the dilemma in the character of Maryam. So it's not only about culture, the clash of cultures, it's not only about the dilemma, but also it is also a problem of the generation. It is a generational problem. As we know that the in-laws belong to the old generation, while Maryam belongs is the newly educated generation aspiring for change and aspiring for connecting the two. And uh, what is ironic again is that as long as the in-laws are uh, dominating and silencing the generation uh, is symbolized in their son, Farouk, the man, the boy, who is supposed to carry on the the tradition of the father is silenced. And this is one of the criticisms which is lurking in the story as he has never appeared and it is the father who is speaking on his behalf. That's also questioning that is the voice of the new generation in uh, uh, migrating in a diasporic situation. Uh, the, the issue uh, is much more important when the writer gives voice to a young educated girl and uh, patriarchy is somehow questioned and much more that is that we move from the submissive, su submissive character who is Maryam into a much more rebellious girl who is going to make the man speak because she called Farouk and she decided to speak with him. So beginning of communication 
probably is the key. One of the answers in the story is that speaking, talking, inviting the other with the boy to speak in order to make him change. How far he is going to change? How far he is able to change? That's another question that the writer leave open and it is very optimistic in terms of the presence of the newly educated generation symbolized in the major character Marim.